whenever you take a trip, it is important that you arrive on time and on budget. To arrive on time, you've got to keep to a schedule. When it comes to determining a budget for your road trip, you need to consider such things as costs of gas, food, and lodging. You don't want to end up the trip in debt. If our trip is successful, it is because we depended on controlling as our navigator. Controlling is directly related to planning. The controlling process ensures that plans are being implemented properly. In the functions of management cycle, planning, organizing, staffing, influencing, and controlling, planning moves forward into all other functions, and controlling reaches back. Controlling is the final link in the functional chain of management activities and brings the functions of management cycle full circle. In this lesson, I'll introduce you to controlling. Welcome to Principles of Management, Lesson 12, Controlling. This is Jimmy Allen. For Lesson 12, read Chapters 15 and 16. Chapter 15 focuses on information flow and how it can be managed in organizations. Chapter 16 focuses on the nature of control, the control process, types of controls, and characteristics of effective controls. Control is the process through which standards for performance of people and processes are set, communicated, and applied. Effective control systems use mechanisms to monitor activities and take corrective action if necessary. Managers need quality information in order to make sound decisions. They use technology to solve problems. Data from lots of different sources are put together in a way that creates information for managers to use to make decisions along with their experience, judgment, and intuition. Controls can be divided into three types depending on whether they occur before the process begins, during the process, or after it ceases. Controls that focus on operations before they begin are called feed-forward controls. Their goal is to prevent defects and deviations from standards. Examples include maintenance, budgets, and training programs. Controls that apply to processes as they are happening are called concurrent controls. Examples include steering wheels and cruise control. Controls that focus on the results of operations are called feedback controls. Examples include measurements, comparisons, and budget reports. Dr. J. Edward Deming provided a highly effective technique that serves as a practical tool to carry out continuous improvement in the workplace. It is known as the PDCA cycle or the dimming wheel. PDCA is an acronym of plan, do, check, and act, which should be repeated over time to ensure continuous improvements in a function, product, or process. For example, if employees want to improve during the planning phase of this cycle, they should ask, what are we trying to accomplish? What changes can we make that will result in improvement? How will we know that a change is an improvement? The plan stage involves analyzing the current situation, gathering data, and developing ways to make improvements. The do stage involves testing alternatives experimentally in a laboratory, establishing a pilot process, or trying it out with small number of customers. The check stage requires determining whether the trial or process is working as intended, whether any revisions are needed, or whether it should be scrapped. The ACT stage focuses on implementing the process within the organization 
are with its customers and suppliers. Once all stages are completed satisfactorily, the improvement is standardized. With the changing circumstances or new techniques, the standardized work, process, product, or service is again subjected to further improvement, thus repeating the PDCA again and again. We have now come full circle as the management function of controlling reaches back and links all the preceding functions of organizing, staffing, and influencing to the goals of planning. Plans become the foundation for controls. From the inception of plans, controls are established to provide feedback about profits, costs, sales, and so forth. In organizing, the organizational structure is modified and resources and authority are allocated. In staffing, workers are recruited, hired, compensated, and trained. In influencing, managers ensure smooth workflow and progress toward goals by evaluating. In controlling, they monitor resources and take corrective actions. With this lesson, we've shown you controlling. Try to relate what you read and discuss to your own real experiences at work, in the classroom, on the athletic field, and at home. This has been Management, Lesson 12, Controlling. I'm Jimmy Allen, and I've enjoyed guiding you each step of the way as you've determined your own philosophy of management. Congratulations! Good luck and best of success with your management journey.